Welcome to 5th grade math with Mr. J. So in this video, we are going to be multiplying whole numbers by powers of 10. Powers of 10. Now if you're not sure what powers of 10 are, I did a video on the basics of powers of 10 and what powers of 10 are. I dropped that link down in the description if you want to go ahead and check that out and then come back to multiplying powers of 10. If you're ready for multiplying powers of 10, you've probably noticed there are eight problems on your screen there. We're going to go through these eight problems and hopefully by number eight, you notice a pattern or a rule we can use when we multiply a whole number by a power of 10. So we're going to hop into number one here and go through these problems together. So number one is eight times one. Now one is not a power of 10, but I put it on here because as you can notice, as you notice along the left side here, one, two, three, and four is eight times one, eight times 10, eight times 100, and eight times 1,000. And what we wanna do is we wanna notice a pattern as we go down through these problems. So we all know eight times one is eight. Again, one is not a power of 10. The powers of 10 are 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, a million, and so on. So let's go to number two. Eight times 10. Think to yourself, what's eight times 10? Hopefully you're thinking 80, right? Let's do eight times 100. Eight times 100 is 800. And then let's finish off with eight times a thousand, and that's gonna give us 8,000. Simple enough, right? I'm gonna line all these answers up over here to the right, and I want you to take a look at where the eight is placed as we go down through these answers. So eight times one, we have eight. Then we have eight times 10. What place did the eight move to? It moved over to the tens place, right? And what did we use to bump the eight over to the tens place? We used a zero. How about 800? We move the eight to the left again. Eight times 100. And the eight's in the hundreds place. What did we use to bump the eight over to the hundreds place? two zeros. And then how about eight times a thousand? We get eight thousand. And the eight is in the thousands place. What did we use to bump the eight over to the correct place value? We used three zeros. Now notice, three zeros in a thousand? Guess how many zeros were in my answer? Two zeros in a hundred? Guess how many zeros I used to bump everything to the correct place value? Two. One zero and 10. How many zeros did I put on the end of eight to bump it to the correct place value? One. So whenever you're multiplying by a power of 10, all you're doing is moving your digits to the left in the place value chart to increase the value. And we do that by putting zeros on the end to push everything to the right spot. So let's look at number five here. We have 67 times 100. So all this is saying is we are pushing 67. The six is gonna go two spots to the left. And the seven is going to go two spots to the left. And we put two zeros on the end of 67 in order to do that. 100 has two zeros. So we put two zeros on this end of 67 to push it to the right spot and we get 6,700. Now an easy way of explaining this is I just add two zeros to the end of 67. Well, that's true, but it really doesn't show that we understand what we are doing. If you wanna think of it like that, that's fine, but make sure you understand that we put the two zeros on the end of 67 in order to push everything to the correct place value so we get the correct answer. Okay, think back to a simpler problem. I'll come back to this eight times 10 is 80, right? We all know 10 plus 10 plus 10, eight times 
equals 80, or 8 times 10 is 80. We used one zero to push that 8 to the correct spot, to the correct place value. Okay? Now number 6, we have 14 times 10 squared, or 14 times 10 to the second power. Well, we have to think about what 10 to the second power is. 10 to the second power means 10 times 10. Expand it out, right? And 10 times 10 is 100. Exponent of 2, expand 10 out twice, two zeros in our 100. So all this means is 14 times 100. So how many zeros do we put on the end of 14 to push it to the correct place value? Well, two. So all we need to do is put two zeros on the end of 14 and it will give us the correct answer. Our answer is 1,400. Now, when you have these exponents, look, we have a two here. That means two zeros on the end. Okay, that exponent just tells you how many zeros you need to put on the end to push everything to the correct place value. So number seven is a very, very important one because we have a 20 here. It already has a zero on the end. But we need to push that two three spaces to the left and we need to push that zero three spaces to the left. So we need to put an additional three zeros on the end of 20 to get everything to the right place value. So we need one, two, three, we get 20,000, okay? Don't do this, don't just put three total zeros, that would give us 2,000. Is that the same as 20,000? No. And you gotta think what makes sense? Well, 20 times 1,000 wouldn't give you 2,000. Two times 1,000 equals 1,000. 20 times 1,000 equals 20,000. Makes sense, and it is our correct answer. So let's go to number eight. 61 times 10 to the third power, which 10 to the third power means 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. So we have 61 times 1,000. So we have our 61, and then we need our three zeros on the end to push it all to the correct place values. And we have 61,000. So that's multiplying whole numbers by powers of 10. You use zeros to push everything to the correct spot. And you look back at your original problem, you check what the exponent is, or how many zeros are in your power of 10, and that will match how many zeros you need to put on to your answer, okay? So that's multiplying whole numbers by powers of 10. It's time for you to try some on your own, so I dropped the link to the mastery check down in the description. I will see you over at that mastery check to see if you have it down. Thanks for watching.